we're going to review one of the homework questions that seems to give students a lot of challenge when they're doing this. I'm going to alter the numbers a little bit so I'm not giving you the direct answer. But in this case, we have a roulette wheel, right? And we're going to have a roulette wheel that has 37 numbers, no double zero. So this is a special roulette wheel specifically for the statistics class. Now, the question might ask, what is the mean and standard deviation for a $1 bet? And if you win, you get $34 on a single bet. So we're just changing the payouts a little bit. So the probability of a win is going to be 1 out of 37. That's pretty straightforward. And that's equal to 0 0.027. And the probability of losing is 36 out of 37. And that probability is going to be 0 0.973. So now that we've set up our probabilities, now we can kind of compute the mean. If we take the probability of winning and we multiply it by how much we win, the $34, you're going to end up with $34 times the value here in B10. And if we do the same thing for losing, you're going to end up with a $1 loss times the value in C10, which is that probability of losing of 0.973. So what we want to do is we want to add our winning amount, our expected value of winning, minus the expected value of losing. And when we do that, we end up with 0.9189 minus 0.9729. And that gives us a minus 0.054, meaning we're going to lose about 5.4 cents on every dollar bet. And that's how we can compute the expected value. Now, to compute the standard deviation, all we need to do is use our formula a square root of n times p times 1 minus p, where n is the number of trials, which in this case is 1, p is our probability of winning, and 1 minus p is the probability of losing. So here, we'll set up our small table of n, p, and 1 minus p. We'll plug in our values that we have before, 1, 0.027, and 0.973. And when we take the square root of the product of those numbers, we end up with 0.162. And that's our standard deviation for a $1 bet on this particular roulette wheel. Now, what does this mean? Well, if we were to set up our mean at negative 0.054 or a 5.4 cent loss, we can use the standard deviation to determine kind of this variance around or the spread around the mean uh, for this particular roulette wheel. So if we took one standard deviation to the left or minus one standard deviation and one standard deviation to the right, we would end up with negative 0.216 and a positive 0.108. So this means that one standard deviation around the mean is going to be a loss of 21 cents or a gain of 10 cents. That makes sense on, on a single bet, even though you don't really win 10 cents or 21 cents, but this will become clearer when we get to about 100 bets. If we take two standard deviations, two standard deviations to the left and two standard deviations to the right, or negative two standard deviations and positive two standard deviations, you'll end up with negative 0.37 and positive 0.27. And remember that two standard deviations is kind of like our 95% interval. And so this means that you have a 95% chance of losing 0.378 cents or gaining 0.270 cents. And that's how we would interpret this. It's not exactly clear with $1 bets because you're either going to win 34 or you're going to lose a dollar. But let's say that we do this multiple times. What if we had 100 bets? If we have 100 bets, we're kind of going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to set our probability of winning and probability of losing. We have 1 out of 37 as our probability of winning, 36 out of 37 our probability of losing. We have 0.027 and 0.973 as the respective probabilities. What we'll do is we'll compute the same expected value, and it's the same number that we had before of negative 0.054. In other words, we lose 5.4 cents on every dollar bet. The only difference is we're just going to multiply that by 100. Because if we would expect to lose 5.4 cents on every dollar bet, well, we'd expect to lose $5.40 on 100 bets. So all we're doing is multiplying the expected value by the number of trials, or the number of, in this case, roulette spins. Well, what about the standard deviation? Well, we had the standard deviation formula before, where it was the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. So we'll set up our table again, and we have our probability of winning at 0.027 and our probability of losing at 0.973. The only difference now is we're going to change that n from 1 to 100. And when we do that, 
our standard deviation becomes 1.62. Now, if you look at that math a little bit, you're going to notice that uh, if you remember or recall, recall your square root rules, what will happen is I can take the square root of each one of those items. So if I took the square root of n and n was 100, it would be 10. So it makes sense that now we would basically multiply our, standard, our original standard deviation for the $1 bet times 10. So what does this mean? Again, if we take our mean of a negative $5.4 and we take one standard deviation on both sides, you're going to end up with a negative 7.02 on the left and a negative 3.78 on the right. And if we take two standard deviations, you end up with negative 8.64 and negative 2.16. That means there's a 95% chance that you're going to lose between $8.64 and $2.16. So this gives you that 95% interval and it shows that the more bets you make, the more likely you are to lose money. And of course, we know that to be true because there's no way that the casinos are gonna lose money.